What's up? Uh, this is an editorial video? I don't know what else to call this. Um, so mommy and daddy are fighting. Uh, the internet film critics have noticed. Uh, Chris Stuckman, who is... I would love to have his followers. Do you have any idea what I could do with two million people listening to me while I talk about audio description? My god. Um... So, yeah, I would love to just steal his channel and just have that and just suddenly just be like, hey guys, I'm the new Chris Stuckman, and let's talk about audio description and accessibility in film. I would probably start losing subscribers really fast, but, you know, uh, <laughs> at least I get maybe one video in there to talk about audio description. Um, he released a video uh, sort of... <sighs> bashing people who uh, continue to uh, hate on on movies and, uh, you know, talking about studio interference and how hard it is because he's been part of the system and he understands. <laughs> I love Chris. First of all, I want to say I also did a... I did one thing which I don't... I haven't seen a single other critic do. I did a best of 2023 video that were my favorite critics of 2023 and Chris was my runner-up and my favorite critic was Adam Does Movies who released a video in response whose video was quite pointed uh, directly addressed Chris he didn't talk around it and said you know no, that's bullshit what are you doing if you only review good movies what are you like what is the point of that um, you're not a critic anymore because all you're doing is you're just saying these are the things I like these are a few of my favorite, you know, and he has a point with that too. So I wanted, what is the point of, of this? What, what, why are we doing what we do? Well, first of all, why do I do what I do? I, because I need to talk about audio description. There aren't many people like me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I work closely. I'm actually on a committee for American Council of Blind Media, uh, advisory committee on audio description. And uh, uh, we've conversations come up, and we're like trying. We're like, do you know of any other blind film critics? I'm like, I know of two. <laughs> like I, uh, <laughs> trying to trying to find more. You know, I can't even. I can't create a guild for us. There aren't that many. So this is like very much like a representation matters thing. Um, I need to be able to talk about audio description and why it's good, why it's not good. Uh, a film when it doesn't have audio description, why it needs it, uh, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff, why we need that stuff. So my situation is kind of different than either one of theirs. Um, however, another valid question is, we're all three white dudes. Uh, there are a lot of white guys on, on YouTube. Um, I had a real life conversation uh, I, where I work with uh, a student of mine who's a student of color. We were talking about film and uh, I said, he was talking about, he's like, yeah, I was thinking about getting out there. I was like, you should do it. There are not enough. There are like thousands of people who look like me and one of every 50 who look like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, uh, it, you need to fill the space with uh, a, a variety of voices uh, because we all come from different perspectives and different walks of life. And um, that's part of the problem is... Uh, I hate to say it, but I wish I was given a fast pass on this because there's just, there's no representation for us right now. It just doesn't exist um, out there. There's nobody who's talking about audio description and accessibility while also trying to talk about film criticism. It just doesn't exist. But does that mean that I can't talk about when a film is bad? Why? Uh, Chris says that nobody sets, uh, sets out to make a bad movie. My counter to that would be uh, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer, if he truly believes that those two people set out to make good movies, if he watched, I don't know, inappropriate comedy, uh, movie 43, um, some of those films, and truly felt like the people behind those films, that the writers and the directors were setting out to actually make quality work, films that were good, in his heart of hearts, then he's just delusional because uh, there are a lot of people who also see film as cash. He's talking about it also from a studio perspective and also how like studio heads 
uh, use their properties, and it's everything's related to Madam Web, which I haven't seen, so I'm not going to comment on whether Madam Web is good or not. What I will say is that, as far as my channel goes, I the way I tend to review things is I try to go in with as clear of a head as I can, and start sort of from the top. Like every film starts with an A, and then as the film progresses, it will lose ground. Basically, I don't come into it with every film starting at zero and then it has to earn points. I kind of start with everybody having a hundred and then you lose points as the film goes on. So, um, through a series of choices and I, I actually looked at my grades for last year. And, um, while I do have a grade that nobody else gives, which is unwatchable, um, and I gave 40 films a grade of unwatchable because they were all films that I watched without audio description and uh, they needed audio description too much for me to be able to uh, find, figure out what an accurate grade would be from me. Um, they were missing too much, generally sci-fi, action, horror movies, um, some comedies, a couple dramas, um, but uh, just a sort of a cross-section. I did grade a few films that didn't have audio description just because of the simplicity of what they were. Um, I also opted out of grading a couple films that, um, that their subject matter um, was too important and I didn't want to... I couldn't put a grade on it because I couldn't uh, endorse a blind community watching those films like Bobby Wine, The People's President. However, I can't also sit through a film where people are being shot for voting and put any sort of negative connotation on a film like that. Um, I only gave two Fs last year out of over 270 films seen in uh, 2013, uh, 2023. So um, I gave four D minuses. I generally don't go into a film if I think I'm not going to like it. Um, the Maybe the one, <laughs> the one that stood out would be like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, which was like, is anybody ever going to like this film? Um, which I didn't even give an F to, by the way. Didn't even give that film an F. So that wasn't one of my two Fs. So, um, yeah, I go into films, uh, or I don't, I, I, I don't watch a film if I think I have too negative of an image of it in my mind. I want to try to give a film the benefit of the doubt. And I ended up giving a lot of films that critics uh, were demolishing uh, uh, you know, cross-section of critics were demolishing higher grades because I didn't hate them. I didn't hate the Marvels. I didn't hate the Flash. I didn't hate Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Um, Ant-Man is, it's the worst of the three Ant-Mans, but I didn't hate it. Um, so just some of the, the, like the easy targets from the past year, I just didn't, I didn't firebomb them. So, um, I think for me as a critic, my grades tended to be higher um, I gave a lot of like C plus, B minus, B, B pluses in that range because I'm here because I love film. I started out as a movie critic in middle school, uh, legitimately for my newspaper, for my, I had a small town, population about 10,000. They didn't have a movie critic. I asked if I could be one. And they said, sure. So I started reviewing films in the seventh grade. So uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, some six, six, six or seventh grade. Actually, I think maybe both. Um, and yeah, so I actually had, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. It's weird that I'm not recognized. It's weird that I'm 40 and I still can't get in Rotten Tomatoes when my first review was posted for a paper back when I was like 12. You know, it's like, it's weird, but neither here nor there. Uh, the, the internet being the way that it is, everybody can put their opinions out there. And I think Chris Stuckman is uh, getting a little bit, he's seeing, what he's seeing is not film criticism. What he's seeing is the internet uh, bashing films and not actually, um, actually movie critics. <laughs> Um, there are a lot of people who can just do what I do and just start it up a YouTube channel or start up a website and never get accredited. It's really hard to get accredited because of that. It's n like next to impossible. You have to have a massive social following now to jump into a group. 
Um, they want to know your stats. They want to know how many followers you have. It's less and less about content. I actually have a, I have a degree in cinema studies. I have the degree that says I, I do this. Uh, this is what I do. I went to school for this. That doesn't matter. Nobody ever asks me, uh, do you have a, a degree? Uh, can you send, can you send us your <laughs> transcripts? They don't care. That's not what it's about. So, um, yeah. Uh, so Chris is, is, he's missing a, he's missing a huge boat here. And what he's trying to do, he, he announced years ago that he was, he wasn't going to do negative reviews. Why? Because he's making his own films. Well, he has 2 million followers. So I have friends who make films and they, they make films that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, short films. Actually, I have a friend who uh, is making films that people have heard of. I have a film. I have a friend who has worked really close with Kevin Smith, um, and who has been traveling and doing the film festival circuit for both um, shooting Clerks and for Chasing Chasing Amy, and uh, films that people have heard of, but they're not massive releases. Um, he doesn't have the platform that Chris Stuckman has. When when Shelby Oaks opens and gets re gets released, it's probably going to do box office. You know, it's going to get a major distribution deal. It's going to end up in wide theaters. So his experience is not necessarily the same as everybody else's either. Um, as a as a hardworking director, think about all the people who are making films that never get seen that are popping around at film festivals that are, you know. Um, just hoping to somewhere those are the critics but people don't review those films chris doesn't review those films he reviews films that he thinks people will want to hear about if chris really is that concerned about the hard-working film people he would be reviewing films that no one else is reviewing he would be going to um not just the major film festivals, you know, where titles really get noticed, but he'd be going to shittier film festivals, <laughs> I hate to say that, but I mean the ones where they don't get the big titles. Instead, they get other titles, titles that you don't necessarily hear about again. And he'd be talking about how he found great little gems at those film festivals. Um, so what Chris is doing is very self-serving. Uh, I don't mind it, but I do mind that he gets on a pedestal and then admonishes everybody else for not doing what he's doing. Dude, you're just reviewing films you like. <laughs> That's all you're doing. It's fine, but don't try to tell everybody else that they need to do what you're doing. So, um, Adam does have a point, you know? Uh, if all you, if all you do is review films you like, then if you don't review something, does that mean you don't like it? Because that's the inference. Like, for example, he he makes a non-review of Madam Web. <sighs> well, when you address the fact that you've seen the film and you're not reviewing it, and you say you only review films you like, you've already given the film a thumbs down. I don't know if you... <laughs> I don't know if he realizes that, but that's essentially what he's done. So he essentially has said, don't watch Madam Web. Um, the whole thing is dumb. I, I don't think that anybody, I don't think that they're necessarily looking to hear from anybody with 221 subscribers, but, um, Chris never should have made that video. He just never should have made it. It's, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but everybody else has been reviewing films positively and negatively for years, <clears throat> whether you're in film criticism or theater or whatever, um, live theater, re books, uh, music, uh, nobody just opts out of the bad ones. Uh, he's doing it so that studios will like him and release his film and so that he can get deals. He's actually not a critic anymore. He just keeps calling himself that. So I love Chris Tuckman. I've been a fan of him since he was like awkwardly uh, his, his early videos are so bad. I don't even know if he still has them up. Um, but it, I know you, I have very like low tech videos. He had really low tech videos too. 
I think he did some where it looked like he was like holding the camera up to his face. You could just like see his face. And I kind of remember doing that at the same time. Like I didn't have a tripod for my phone. I was just putting my thoughts out there, you know? Uh, yeah, he kind of has videos like that. So, um, anyway, uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, film criticism, you have to do both. You can't opt out. First of all, um, you should be watching everything anyway. What everybody needs to do, including Adam, is review the films that aren't going to get them the hits. Because supposedly, if we're all here because we love film, the best way to love film is to do a broader cross-section. Not just to do the films that are going to get you uh, 50000 but put your money where your mouth is and dare to review a film that is off the beaten path that isn't a major release of the week, that is an independent film that is really good. Um, an example of that would be uh, Lily Gladstone's other movie from last year, uh, undi uh, un an un Undiscovered Country, un un whatever country, that film. Uh, where, were the, where were the reviews from everybody? You know? It didn't exist. All of a sudden she wins a Gotham Award for Best Actress for that film and you know, nothing. Um, passages had really good uh, uh, print critics. Are there? I, I didn't see a whole hell of a lot of these uh, YouTubers. Where's Chris Stuckman's review of Passages? Where's Adams? You know, um, where's anybody? Yeah, it, it's. I didn't like Passages, by the way. Um, actually, I gave it unwatchable because it doesn't have audio description and uh, part of it's in French. So, do more, do better. Um, there's a lot of the smaller channels that don't have the followings that they have do review these films and, um, they do it because they actually love film. So those are my thoughts, but yeah, dude, uh, I just, uh, you know, it's not studio interference. I'm sorry. No studio interfered on Jason Freeberg and Aaron Seltzer. They just make shitty movies. Uh, U Uwe Boll, uh, he didn't have a studio interference. He just has proven himself incompetent. Film after film after film after film after film. He just can't make a film. It wouldn't matter what studio he was at. Studio could give him final cut and just release whatever he wanted onto the screen. It would still look terrible. Um, it, it, no, it's not studio interference. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, but uh, I, yeah, it's a weird conversation to be having. It's funny that we're all having it about Madam Web. <laughs> Movie made twenty six million dollars this weekend. I don't think I don't think uh, fans care what critics think about that. So uh, they're gonna go see the film anyway. So that's the truth. I'll probably end up liking it. I liked Venom. Let there be carnage. Yep. So anyway, that's it. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the other side.